you are to give advice to maybe a student on Scott Gem or a student thinking of applying to Scott Gem who's maybe quite apprehensive about the idea of working rurally, you know, what would your advice be or, or, or your, your thoughts be? Yeah, I mean, I guess I probably see that in a sort of a, a, in, a, in, a, in some in a different. A, tiers the sort of tiers of interest for students so one respect for your education I, I'm in no doubt that you get an excellent education in a rural setting uh, and that's because you will be exposed to the full breadth of clinical presentations everything you, you'd be amazed what arrived at the door of the hospital in Skye or at the door of all the general practices in rural Scotland and that's true of any um, uh, GP surgery in Scotland but the difference in rural areas is you're obliged to uh, there's more pressure on you to be able to deal with whatever arrives um, because you don't have access to other services so easily so from an education point of view I think it's excellent for, with respect to the presentations but also with respect to the attention you'll get just because there's less junior doctors or doctors in training there's less uh, competition from other medical students so you really do get sort of quite intensive one-to-one -one, um, mentorship or supervision and teaching and so on. And that's, um, I think that's excellent. I remember on Sky, sometimes we would have elective students from either London or further afield, and they would all comment that uh, the medical experience that they had there was uh, unparalleled because they, as I said at the start, they got to see the initial complaint, be involved in the stabilization bit, maybe transferred into the ward, look after them over a couple of days. It's like, an, it's like a, uh, the longitudinal integrated clerkship compressed down into really intense clinical learning opportunities. Uh, with one-on-one -on -one mentorship. It's like, for me, it's almost the perfect uh, scenario for learning. Um, uh, so so there's, there's that. Uh, then there's the lifestyle opportunities that you have. Um, sure, the winters can be dark um, and the weather is often bad on the west coast of Scotland or the <laughs> northwest coast of Scotland, but there's often lots of community stuff going on. These people are resilient people and they've learned over generations how to keep themselves busy and look after themselves and you can you can engage with the community um, and when the weather allows then there's you know the, the rural Scotland's a playground that's uh, almost unique in, in, in Europe anyways it's, it's probably one of the true last wildernesses in Europe so you get to explore all these areas and indulge any hobbies that you might have uh, from photography to mountaineering to whatever um, and, and, and so uh, I think it offers a, a, a really excellent opportunity for medical students. Um, and, and I guess the final sort of thing to say is just around feeling isolated. Mm -hmm. I think that is a feature of this type of uh, these experiences, but with, with technology and, and particularly with COVID, we're all much more, uh, more comfortable with uh, using technology to stay connected. And, and I know the uh, Scottish Government are very committed to improving the connectivity in rural areas. So there's a real, uh, I, I think that could be a deal breaker with respect to feeling isolated. Um, you can touch back in with, your, with the core faculty or with your peers at, at any stage. So um, that would probably be my, my, my thoughts on that. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. So now just to transition to your work with Scott, Jim. Um, do you want to just talk through your roles in a bit more detail. You said you were, you know, you're the uh, lead GCM, and you've got some responsibilities to do with uh, the second year block as well. Would you like to talk to me about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, yeah, so I'm the lead uh, generalist clinical mentor. It's quite a mouthful. <laughs> uh, so we we use the uh, acronym GCM, and that's a unique role actually in in uh, medical education in so far as um, what we recognise uh, is. G, uh, in order to um, try and inspire the next generation of generalists, what you one thing that we know you require is early and good quality mentorship and role modelling. Uh, you also need teaching and tutoring, and you also need assessment and 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 some support. Uh, so so we've designed this sort of role uh, called a GCM, and this is your um, go-to person. Uh, they teach you clinical interactions or clinical skills and communication skills and then they're with you when you go to practice 
and you contextualize all that learning with real patients. And as you know, we have a case-based curriculum in the first two years of Scott Gem. So every week you're meeting a new clinical case and we try and provide complementary experiences so that you have a good context for your learning all the time. And really the model is based around this master apprentice type model. Um, and we think it works quite well because we recognize that the rapid cycling of cases can be a bit disorientating or overwhelming. So if you have somebody, a trusted a senior clinical educator that you can touch base with on a regular basis and um, that will allow you to calibrate your learning and contextualize your learning and hopefully remind you why you're here to do medicine because ultimately you want to treat patients so you get to do that every week under their supervision so i'm i feel really privileged to lead that team uh, we have a, a well-established team in years one, two, and we're just developing the, the, the team of GCMs for year three. We have a network of GCMs now across Scotland. And I guess my role is, is primarily around supporting them. Uh, they're the ones that uh, do the core uh, sort of education and mentorship. Occasionally I have to fill in for them, uh, which, uh, which uh, hopefully isn't too taxing for the students to endure. Um, and then uh, I guess, uh, the, the, yeah, there's a whole sort of background of work that uh, is required in order to make that happen. So that's, that's, uh, that's where I sort of um, see myself. And, and actually, like Scott Gem, I was attracted to Scott Gem was, uh, because I felt it was so compelling. I also feel the GCM model is really compelling because I can remember role models in my career that absolutely made a fundamental difference to where I am today. And I, and I hope that when, um, through supporting the GCMs to do their role, that when you guys uh, graduate and, 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 and go off uh, in your own directions, that you'll remember some of your interactions with the GCMs as well, and that that will have inspired you to, to go down whatever pathway you choose to go down. Um, so so that's, that's that role. And then um, at the end of year two, there's a block called Patient Journey Urgent Care. And I, I think um, I, I'm, I'm delighted to sort of provide the leadership for that uh, block because one of the unique things about being a rural generalist is that you have to be confident that you might need to deal with any presentation for the first uh, couple of minutes or hours if you were waiting for retrieval or whatever. And that's a real USP around rural care. And I think it's one of the most exciting parts of the portfolio of work that you might do as a rural doctor. Um, so uh, as I mentioned at the start, my clinical role transcends general practice and emergency medicine. And so um, I think I'm well placed to lead in that block because I want you to get a sense that um, this is this is a this is a this is a, 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 an additional skill set that you might need for rural generalism. It's quite unique to Scott Gem, and so during that block, we try to expose you to a range of uh, emergency presentations um, that you might encounter, and then provide you with the additional skills that you might need to either recognise that this is an emergency and to do some of the initial steps uh, that will be required uh, uh, um, if you were exp if you encountered this. Um, and, and I think that's sort of, that, that has a lot of, um, it's an exciting area on its own right, but also it's one area to, to uh, get the students involved with because there's a real community of practice around pre-hospital care in Scotland. There's a community of enthusiasts, some of whom do this voluntarily through basics. Uh, there's a lot of charitable organisations that support pre-hospital care in Scotland. And I'm, I'm hoping that by, by getting you guys engaged with this, um, it's something that you might continue beyond graduation. Uh, it's an interest that you might be able to maintain beyond graduation. So, so yeah. So I so I lead that block. It's a six week block, although this year it wasn't because of COVID. Um, and and it's I, I see it as the first time that you guys really get your sort of teeth into uh, emergency and urgent care, um, and some other bits and pieces. As I said, that we didn't get to do this year because of COVID, but. So that, they're my two roles, essentially. Yeah, because there's a lot of things, like I was really looking forward to the emergency block because, as you said, look, there was a lot of things going on in it. There was you know, ambulance um, placements, you know, there was uh, A&E placements, and, and then a, a basics weekend as well. You know, there was quite a lot going on that, you know, as you said, it'd be our first sort of foray into that sort of side of medicine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I think the, the, like the vision for the block is that you get exposed to that full 
um, uh, tapestry of pre-hospital care in Scotland. So as you said, Scottish Ambulance Service are key stakeholders in that. The charitable organisations like the Retrieval Service or the RNLI or Mountain Rescue Teams, the uh, emergency medicine departments that support rural Scotland, um, the um, GPs that do all of the urgent care across Scotland and often have to deal with qu quite, uh, quite acute presentations. Um, and so we wanted you to walk away from the block with a sense of all of that and with some core clinical competencies appropriate for your level of training that you will be able to recognise that this patient is in distress and uh, we need to do something about this. I need supervision now or I need to phone an ambulance now. That, that sort of level. And I, we, we felt that would, that would be um, very useful to you as you embarked on your, on your longitudinal integrated clerkship. Um, so, so, so it was quite wide ranging. Um, I wouldn't call it a purebred emergency block or a purebred urgent care block. You will have that opportunity in year four in Dundee with the, with the, with the um, established four week acute care block. The other thing I would say is you should get an opportunity actually to pick up on these competencies and skills over the next two years anyway but my view and the view that i uh, the, the view that's shared by the program is that sometimes duplicating these really important bits and pieces are important um, so so don't feel too downheartened there will be opportunities in the next uh, year or two for you to pick up on those and, and we'll provide some some structured opportunities for you as well yeah sounds good yeah and just finally um do you have any thoughts on how, how you've found sort of being involved in Scott Gem with the students and, and maybe the, the, have you noticed any differences between you know the, the standard undergraduate medical route and then this what Scott Gem is trying to do how have you found that yeah I mean um, I, that was another part of the program that I found really attractive that you guys are all graduates so you're you know by Definition, you have proven that you can learn, you know how to learn, you're a self-regulated learner, uh, you're going to be autonomous and independent and, and so on. And, and, and that's really exciting to me. The other thing is you've all sacrificed a lot to be here. And so you're a great group to en be engaged with because you're very motivated. Um, uh, the other uh, um, reflection I would have about the year, the year groups within Scotland is, uh, within Scotchem, is that uh, you bring a lot of academic and professional skill and ability with you that's of benefit to the programme. So whether that's supporting your peers with learning, which I think is really important, or contributing to the programme or the quality of the work that you bring, or the insights that you have for how the programme might develop, um, these are all, I think, really important. And, and I know that certainly on behalf of the GCMs, they really enjoy working with you guys because they get so, they find that they get so, so much out of it. You know, you're, you're, you're challenging, you're a challenging group, but that's actually uh, makes it really rewarding to teach you. And, and, and so uh, we, 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 there's definitely a difference there between traditional undergraduate students. Um, and you also just bring a lot of, you know, life experience and maturity and some of you guys are parents and, you know, lots of other bits and pieces that you understand. Um, so that's, that can only be a value to the programme and it's a pleasure to teach you. So I think we'll end on that note. Um, thanks very much for speaking to me. It's great to speak to somebody who's, who's passionate about what they do and, you know, and brings that to the course. So it's been good to speak to you today. Thanks very much, Andrew. Cheers.